And the Samaritans, for their part, looked at the Jews as a bunch of snobs. So there's already enmity between them. And so it's kind of surprising that Jesus expected that the folks in the Samaritan village would receive him at all. And the disciples, uh, at least the, the response of James and John, is really remarkable. They say, Lord, do you want us to command fire to come down from heaven and destroy these people? And Jesus rebukes them. We don't know what he says, but it seems likely to me that it has something to do with recalling to them what he has said and what he has done, what they have seen him do. And to compare their statement to those kinds of actions and words. And when they would do that, I'm sure that they would find that they come up short again. Now, there's some, there, there are a couple of things, I don't know about you, but there are a couple of things about this story that I find really interesting. First, I, I think of the story of Sodom. You remember a couple of weeks ago I mentioned in the sermon that at least one interpretation of the story about the punishment of Sodom and Gomorrah is that it is, the punishment is because of a lack of hospitality. Two angels come into the city in the guise of men. And they go to the house of Lot, Abraham's cousin. And Lot is, as, as, as people in that day were wont to do, Lot is hospitable toward them. But the men of Sodom come and beat on the door and say, send out these strangers. We want to have our way with them. And Lot says, don't do this thing. And the angels cause blindness to fall on the men. And Lot and his family flee. And fire and brimstone rain down from heaven and destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Then in this story, a Samaritan village is inhospitable to Jesus and his followers. And the two disciples, James and John, say, do you want us to command fire from heaven to come down and destroy them? Their sin in Samaria is the same as the sin in Sodom, these two are saying. And so maybe the warning to us is, don't be unkind strangers because fire might come down from heaven. I don't think that's likely. But strangers have special gifts for us, and we need always to remember that. But I find it remarkable that these two disciples think that because of the inhospitality of the village, that they have merited, that the villagers have merited destruction. And Jesus rebukes them and says, that is not our way. The second thing that I find really remarkable about this is the hubris that is involved on the part of these two disciples. They think that they can actually pray down fire from heaven. Now, personally, I'm glad that I don't have that kind of power. Because, you know, you've heard of in, in war, scorched earth policy. Well, I would probably scorch a few people, a few villages. And I'm glad that nobody else has that power. That power does not belong to us. But I find it remarkable that these two disciples had to be rebuked because they actually thought they had the power to make that kind of judgment. Jesus says, you want to try something that you shouldn't be trying. Focus instead on the ministry. Focus instead on what I've said and what I've done and let this other go. And then the passage turns to these three little vignettes. Someone comes to Jesus, says, I'll follow you wherever you go. And Jesus discourages him. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. But the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. You want to follow me, Jesus is saying? 
Well, understand that there is a cost. It may cost you your comfort. It may cost you your ease of living. It may cost you something that you don't want to give up. So think carefully about what you're going to do. Think carefully about what you're saying. Because there is a price that you may pay. Think about it. And then do or do not. And we don't know what the, what the, what the man did, do we? We don't know if he followed Jesus. We don't know if he considered Jesus' words and then said, you know, that's just too much for me. But Jesus says to him, there is no try. If you start down this path, understand that it may lead to difficulty for you. Put your focus in the right place. Put your priorities in the right place. And go and proclaim the word. The second one is, comes uh, after an invitation from Jesus. Jesus says to this person, follow me. And the person says, well, you know, I'll try. I'd be perfectly happy to follow you, but let me go bury my father first. I wonder, is your father dead? Or is he still alive? Are you talking about coming, you know, tomorrow or whenever? And Jesus is harsh. Is he not? Let the dead bury their own dead. But you, you go and proclaim the good news. The kingdom of God. That's harsh. I mean, this young man, could be an old man, we don't know. This person had an obligation. And it's an obligation that any of us would feel to a parent. Or to a child, or to a spouse, or to a friend. It's a very human thing. And Jesus says to him, let the dead bury their own dead. Get your priorities straight. Either you do this thing or you do not. Either you follow me or you do not. There is no trial. 